I want to talk about one of the most undermined features when it comes to video production and in particular sound production. And that's a good field recorder. Let's dive in. So I've actually never done a review on my Zoom F3 field recorder and why I in particular decided to go with this one. This is so much more than just a field recorder or a audio interface for your talking heads or your YouTube videos. And we'll go over the details of why all the pros and cons of this field recorder, why I think it's the best field recorder, the best bang for your buck right now currently on the market for YouTubers or one man bands, filmmakers, folks that are pursuing documentaries or even corporate interviews and corporate videos. Before we can jump into the Zoom F3 in particular, I wanted to let you know that I usually use the Zoom F3 as my audio interface with a boom mic overhead. Previously, we used the Audio Technica AT4053B, but as some of you fans out there know, my favorite boom mic, indoor boom mic, was the Sennheiser MKH-50, and we recently purchased that. So that's what we've been using. So if you're hearing a difference, it's because now for today's video only, I will be using the Hollyland Lark Max, which I think is a fantastic lavalier mic. I wanted to start off the video by talking about my previous field recorder, which I think was a great, fantastic product that I still own today, and I think it's a great budget-friendly buy, so I wanted to mention it. And it would actually be this guy, the Zoom H4n Pro. A lot of people bought this guy. You're gonna be noticing a lot of accessories in this video. If you are interested in any of the products that I'm showcasing today, there will be Amazon affiliate links in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and purchase them for yourself. Why am I talking about this really old? I think this thing came out in 2016. Don't quote me on that. It's a really old field recorder. Well, I want you guys to know why old gear is still very relevant. Now, this was actually not something that I owned brand new previously. I picked this guy up shortly before I picked up the F3 because it was just such a good value. And I got this used just a field recorder, nothing else, just a field recorder and the power cable for 55 bucks on eBay. This guy has treated me really, really well. And in particular, I use this guy all the time for its onboard microphones, for those stereo microphones. I'll get field recordings with this guy. And I've found that it does a great, great job, especially when I'm trying to get like ambient sounds or if I'm just trying to record something in particular as a sound effect for a video, maybe a short film or something like that that we're using. In a pinch, this is really handy. There's some big, big differences between this and the F3, and that's kind of why I want to talk about it. You're getting more inputs. You're actually going to get the two inputs on the bottom, and these are very different than the inputs on the F3 because they can accept both XLR inputs and jacks. So these are dual inputted. And then you also have the two mics on top. So overall, you're getting technically more inputs, more than two inputs, but it's also a much older model, so it's very slow. A very frustrating thing that I had with this guy was if you put in a memory card that's greater than, I think it's like four gigabytes, maybe eight gigabytes, something like that, it bogs it down greatly. And these days, it's really hard to find lower capacity memory cards because memory cards have just exploded, right? They are way better than what they used to be five, 10 years ago. And you can get them now at, you know, one terabyte, for example, micro SD cards at one terabyte. So I think the lowest one that I found that was, I mean, the best value was like a 16 gigabyte memory card and it bogs it down greatly. And honestly, I found some eight gigabytes or lower, but they're very expensive because they're rare now. No one makes them, right? No one cares, but it's still a fantastic field recorder. It doesn't have 32-bit flow. But I wanted something that was budget-friendly that we can use on YouTube, talking heads, in particular as a boom mic interface for films, short films and documentaries, corporate interviews. 
and I wanted something very small that had 32-bit float for that flexibility just in case we needed it. Insert the Zoom F3. And again, everything that you see here, if you're interested in buying it, I'll put links in the description below. So I bought a case for it. I bought rechargeable energizer batteries. There's a clamp that I'll talk about later that comes in really, really handy. And of course, the Zoom F3 itself. It's such a tiny, tiny product. It is a quarter of the size of the last Zoom recorded I just showed you guys. But there's some big features. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the Zoom F3. The first pro that I can think of is the size of this thing. It's so tiny. You hardly notice it. You hardly feel it. It's very lightweight. I mean, it has good weight to it. It feels high quality, but it's so tiny that it's just so discreet. And as you guys know, run and gun filmmakers, if you're doing guerrilla style stuff, if you're around shy people like corporate interviews is a good example, it's always better to be discreet. It kind of relaxes people, right? So this is a very discreet, very small product. Number two, it's the design and build quality with a small caveat that I'll talk about in the cons. It is well built. It feels solid. The screen's actually quite nice. It's not a touch screen, it's a very small screen, but gives you everything that you need. The buttons are pretty good, they're well placed. You have a line out if you wanna to go to your camera and you have your headphone input. Your volume control down here, off to the side over here, you have your playback, your stop and your menus. The menus are actually quite good. I've been a fan of Zoom recorders, and I may be in the minority, I don't know, but I thought their menu systems have always been pretty good and straight to the point. A little bit more like Microsoft DOS, right? There's nothing flashy about them, but you know where to go, you know where to navigate. And then you have your power on and off button and your hold, which also serves as a record button. On the front, you'll find your input one, input two, a couple of settings and your magnifying glass to increase the inputs and things like that. And of course, on your stop, play and menu button, you'll also find your USB-C input or output, your USB-C cable and a slot for your micro SD. On the back, you'll find a threaded mount and your battery compartment along with your serial number. Another thing that I wanna mention are these guide rods, this cage looking thing. It's not a cage. It's actually a way for you to attach this field recorder or loop their loop straps, belt straps to attach this to like a boom pole, for example. Now, let me show you how I will mount this thing for my talking heads to a boom mic. And then I'll show you how my boom operators will usually mount it on the field to their boom poles. And that's the beauty of this thing. It's so flexible. All right, in the back you have your quarter 20. I'm gonna go ahead and thread it in right now. And then we have our clamp on the other end. And I'll usually clamp this somewhere where I can actually see it. For today, I'll just go ahead and clamp it here. Put my field recorder up here and there you go. This is usually how I have everything set up for my talking head. We'll boom my microphone, run the cables down, make sure everything is nicely organized with cable management. Boom this out of frame. It's usually over here someplace, right next to the camera, but I mean, look how clean that looks. It's so tiny, it's so small, clamps on, it's lightweight, no issues whatsoever. But it's even more versatile than that. I'm gonna show you guys how we mount it to a boom operator pole. Here's our typical boom operator pole, and you'll find some Velcro. We're actually gonna use the Velcro to just loop right through the belt loops here on the recorder. Traditionally, you would find like an input meter, right? You would set your audio inputs and go from there. But Zoom tried to do all the guesswork for you and take advantage of the 32-bit float recording. And your inputs are actually gonna be based off of your audio waves. So you're gonna increase your audio waves to increase your input and lower those audio waves, the graphs, to lower your input. So it's a general estimate for you. And then you would fix it in post or adjust it in post. It's not my favorite thing, but it's something that I've learned to deal with and adapt to, and it's actually kind of growing on me, but I found with, with boom operators that will hire for a day to help or whatever, and actually works out really well for them and they enjoy it. It's simple, it's intuitive, 
And so far it hasn't been a problem. I thought it would be, but it's not. So a really neat feature is you can use this as a USB audio interface to your computer, which I think it actually works really, really well, but I don't actually use it for that unless I'm gonna pinch if I'm outside or I'm in the field and I need to use it as an audio interface to record something. At home, I have a really expensive, really good audio interface that's very clean. I've actually never tested this with my Shure SM7B and if you need a cloud lifter or not, maybe I'll do that and let you guys know in the comments. You can set this as your PC Mac audio interface or tablet, which is very cool. So if you're using your iPad Pro and you're editing off of Final Cut Pro, you can use this as an audio interface to increase the quality of your audio recordings rather than just using the onboard mic. And then you can set this into file transfer. Now, anytime you wanna transfer the files through USB-C, you have to go into the menus and you have to select USB file transfer in order to initiate it. Otherwise, you'd have to take the memory card out and do your thing that way. I don't like taking the micro memory card out. I think it's just annoying. So I'll go into file transfer, connect this to a USB-C and then do my file transfers to my computer that way. And then you'll find your system, which will be your language, your date, your time, LCD, power, SD card. You can actually check the compatibility of your SD card to make sure it's all good. The Zoom audio interface will actually do all the work for you. It'll scan the memory card to ensure that you're using the best, most compatible memory card with the field recorder. Then you have your Bluetooth functions. You can actually do some Bluetooth with this. It's an added accessory that you'd have to buy, but you can control this through Bluetooth if you want to, we don't. Okay, now let's talk about some of the cons with this recorder. The first con in regards to build quality and design, I know I said it's excellent, but there's a couple of things that I wanna point out. Number one, the battery compartment door. This thing is so flimsy, it's so plasticky and cheap, it feels like it's just going to snap off and I'm just gonna snap it in half one day and then, I don't know, I don't know, feel kind of screwed, might have to buy another battery door. I hope that they'll have replacement battery doors. Number two, when it comes to design, yes, you have two inputs. I personally think for professional use, for field use, for anything besides YouTube, three inputs would probably be my minimum. So that was a little sad, right? Zoom and other products have a weird way of labeling their field recorders. F3, you would think it would have three total input jacks. Another thing about these two physical inputs, they are not, they are not dual inputs. They are XLR only inputs. And that could be a deal breaker for people, folks out there that wanna record music. If you wanna record your voice and a guitar, for example. Now there's ways around it. You can get a DI box. You can convert your guitar input jack into an XLR jack and so forth. But in my opinion, that was a huge design flaw and a missed opportunity. You have to do dual inputs, right? You're only giving us two physical inputs, at least make them dual inputs. So that's a big con and that's something that you'll notice a big difference between this one and the older field recorder that I showed you earlier. The next con that I'm not too crazy about is the way that this thing arms its recordings and actually records. It has to do with this hold slider, this hold button. If you go all the way down, you're on hold mode. But if you toggle it up, there's a little toggle. That's actually how you start your recordings. You arm and start your recordings. I'm used to a physical record button where you would press it, it would arm, it would flash red, and then you'd press it again and now you're recording. Now. A lot of folks, a lot of beginners, again, this is really, really catering to beginners. A lot of beginners will click that record button once physically and they'll see the flashing light. They'll think they're recording or they'll forget that it's just arming and then they realize they haven't recorded anything. When I was a beginner, I made that mistake a lot, but then you get used to it and you learn. I think what they're doing here, what Zoom's doing with the F3 is they're trying to take all the guesswork out. When you slide the hold button up, it has dual functions. It's not only arming it, but it's recording it at the same time. So I guess you can't accidentally start a recording because you'd have to bump the slider up. Another con, and I mentioned this briefly, was the time code. It's not true time code in my opinion. And you do have to buy an additional Bluetooth adapter. So you do have to pay more money. And then not only you get time code, but you get you know your Bluetooth functions and all that, but it's not true time code. You're not actually like syncing through a wire. And I don't know. Time code's cool. I think for the YouTube people out there, they're gonna appreciate it, they're gonna like it, and it might be like time code 
light. <laughs> it's not necessarily true time code. So overall, what do I think about this unit? Look, it's actually very, very beginner targeted, but it packs a lot of professional features. I really like it. I just think it punches above its weight class. And for YouTube and for run and gun filmmakers, maybe a three, four, five band group, this is wonderful. There's a lot of guesswork that gets eliminated. But if you're going to do more professional stuff in the films and you're going to be on an actual crew, an actual set, then obviously this is not the right product for you. 32 bit float is sort of, it's not a gimmick, but I think it's being marketed very well right now. Yes, it can save your butt, definitely. But it's not this like huge safety net that just eliminates all errors, right? Definitely good to have, nice to have. And actually 24-bit is very high audio. 24-bit's actually being recorded right now into the Hollyland, and it sounds fantastic, but you don't have the flexibility as 32-bit float. So 32-bit float is the future. We're gonna see 32-bit float in everything. And what's nice about this, when you're recording to the memory card, you're getting true 32-bit float recording and the protections and the pros of 32-bit float. Likewise, if you line this out to your camera, you're not going to get true 32-bit float recording because now it's lining out to your camera and your camera doesn't have the ability to record in 32-bit float. Do I think this is a professional unit? No. <laughs> it's not actually a true professional unit. It's great. I think this is a serious filmmaker tool. Sound device, I think, is more pro level, but it's also way more expensive. I think the sound device mix pre three two or whatever i think that's like 850 bucks something like that i bought this on sale on amazon i think i bought it for 250. if we're hired to do a professional shoot if we're doing something that has a lot of money resources being you know tied to the project we'll rent out sound device we'll use those obviously. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. And like always, if you did, please consider subscribing or joining our channel memberships to help us continue making videos like this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.